Okay, there's the comments. Hello. Can everyone hear me or see me? Hi, Leah. Hi, Tabitha. Hey, Lisa. Um, so thank you so much. I'm rocking my Auburn Nutrition sweatshirt for this. Um, so today I was going to talk about kind of the nutrition application process since I just got matched and kind of what I went through with DICUS, which is, it stands for the Dietetics uh, was Dietetics Internship Centralized Application Service. That is what it stands for. And that is what I think a lot of programs are using now. I know a few are kind of standalone, but you'll mostly go through DICUS. And I actually have a link for you if you don't know how to look up your like what program you want to go to so i'll put it in the comments and you can just type in the state you're interested in and um just a few more like things to narrow it down but that's how i was looking through my programs to decide where i wanted to go and i think a good thing to keep in mind so the way programs work is all of them are going to give you a specialization some pick clinical some pick um like their central thing is community some do food service but every single program is going to give you experience in all three because your already exam is going to cover all three of those sections and so you don't have to worry about like stressing about oh like i want to do clinical but i didn't get into this clinical centralized program um you're going to get the experience so that's nothing to worry about i was really stressed about that when i was looking at programs because i wanted to do auburn's for a while and auburn's didn't wasn't like specialized in clinical necessarily so but i talked to the director and it's fine so don't stress about that when you're looking at programs um, but I do want to run through DICUS because DICUS is kind of, you don't really know what DICUS is until you get to it. I didn't know a whole lot about it until I opened the portal. But basically, you kind of go through these little tabs and you're going to fill out your basic information and you're going to have, so it's going to be basic information like your phone number, your address, your email, everything to get in contact. And you're going to have little you're going to need, sorry, you're going to need to make sure you have a resume and a um, personal statement. And sorry, I'm freezing up. Is my video freezing on y'all's end? I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's my internet. Um, at any point, if you have any questions, though, if you're applying, please leave them in the comments. I want to go through DICUS, but I know it's a little bit of a bore, but I just wanted to make sure because I was so nervous with DICUS. Okay, thank you so much for letting me know. Okay, 
So continuing with DICUS, um, you're going to need your resume and you're going to need a personal statement. And you can customize these to any of the schools you wanna to go to. So I had three schools I applied, so I had three different personal statements to go to each of these schools. Um, I wanted to make special note of the GRE because for me and uh, my cohort, the GRE was waived. And I don't know if that's gonna be the case in the future because it's just been COVID that's it's been waived for, but I know some programs still require it. Some might be doing away with it, but give yourself ample time before you apply to make sure you get that GRE in. Is anyone a current nutrition student right now? Did y'all have, did anyone, if you're not, did you have DICUS around when you were applying? Not every school waived it. Uh, Lisa asked if every school waived it. Not every school waived it. I know I had a friend apply to some and she didn't take it. So she wasn't able to, she wasn't able to um, get in because she didn't realize that not every school had waived it. So that is something to look for in the future. That's why I wanted to make special note of it because we kind of thought it was waived for everything. You don't, okay. You don't remember it being called DICUS? Okay. It's still a matching program. I don't know how they used to do it, but it was still a matching program. And I, I, I've heard it be called similar to like a, how a sorority matches things, but you kind of match your schools based on where you want to go. And then once you turn in DICUS, so your DICUS will be due, mine was due February 15th and um, April 3rd was our match day. So in between February 15th and April 3rd, you'll be reaching out to the schools you apply to, or they'll be reaching out to you and you'll be doing e um, interviews and things like that to kind of, and they'll rank you after you do your interview and after you turn in all your material, they'll rank you kind of on where they want you. And then that's how you match. So you only match to one school, which is why it's stressful. But if you don't match the first time, I've heard so many stories. There's always a second wave. Most schools don't fill up the first time. So you always have a second choice or second um, time to do it. But oh. how much time would you say you spent on doing DICUS and your personal statement and applications roughly? I spent a while um, just trying to, I was gonna talk earlier, there is, an, uh, there is a tab where you talk about all your activities and you talk about everything you've done in college. So work, volunteer, uh, conferences, anything you've done that you want to make special note of to your schools, they ask you to be really, really detailed about it. So that you, they'll ask you the name, they'll ask you who you worked under, they'll ask you hours per week, um, how many weeks you worked, what you did, everything. And so you have to take every single thing you've done in four years that you want the school to know and put it on there. So that's why it took a while. Um, and then each school might have supplemental material that for you. Do you, Lisa asked, do you upload your statement or need to cut and paste into, it into the system? I had to cut and paste. I thought it was an upload, but I had to cut and paste. So I did, a, I did like three different Word documents for my three different schools I applied to and um, I would cut and paste <laughs> into the system. Let's see. 
I also wanted to talk about some like tips I would have for current or future nutrition students. I feel like that this would help you with your DICAS application. And just something that make you feel much more prepared for your interviews. I will talk about kind of what I've done and then just some stuff I wish I had done better and wish that I could go back and do and stuff that I'm proud that I did and I think would help everyone who's applying. So my tip, my first tip is to obviously keep your GPA up. Um, it's not the end all be all but it is helpful because GPA is usually some of the first things that people look at when looking at your application. But if you're worried about your GPA, there are so many extracurricular things that schools love. And I kind of want to talk about some stuff that might set you apart. So I highly recommend a leadership position. It doesn't have to be a vice president or president of a club or anything like that. But any kind of leadership position is going to give you something to talk about in an interview. I took like a minor um, like leadership position in a club and I talked about it in pretty much every single interview. I really didn't know that I would, but it came up in every single one. So I highly recommend that. I actually recommend doing research under professor because I think it's pretty different. I don't think a lot of people do it. And schools like and a lot of schools are research based. So I'm going to UAB and it is a very research based school. And so I think research just looks very good professionally. Yes, Tab. Oh, that's great. I, th I think, I hope every nutrition program has a, um, a class that talks about or helps you get your professional and resume and personal statement. And if not, hopefully your campus has somewhere you can go to practice those things. But back to what I was saying about the involvement, I think research and leadership position are two really good things. Obviously clinical shadowing I had a food service job. That was how I got my food service hours. And I worked at Domino's. And I know that's not what people consider healthy for like a nutrition student, but it got you in the kitchen and it got you learning about food handling and food safety. And so I... Uh, Leah wants me to talk about my volunteer. Yeah, so I did a lot of community volunteer things. I worked in a food pantry or I volunteered with a food pantry and I volunteered with campus kitchens and I volunteered with, um, oh gosh, a community garden actually, which is really interesting to kind of take agriculture and growing your own food and talking about kind of how it could solve food security issues. So every, I think every campus will have some sort of food volunteer that you could work with. And I think it's amazing to talk about that because I think especially recently food security has been really talked about and I, a lot of schools will ask about that. Um, other volunteer stuff we did, I worked with kind of an online center where I would make calls um, weekly to talk about summer food. We talked about summer food programs. And I actually did talk about that because, in, in an interview. So I promise you anything you do will get brought up in an interview. And it's just kind of picking out things that will make you stand apart. So shadowing, community involvement, food service, research and leadership, I think would make you really well-rounded. I did, the reason I got connected with BuildUp was because, was because I did a um, mentor-mentee 
uh, what is it called? Like a program. And I didn't expect to get involved with a lot of social media, which was something totally new for me. And this is my first Facebook live, so I'm very nervous, <laughs> but I didn't expect to get involved with social media. And it's been very beneficial to bring me out of my shell. So I think when you get involved, put yourself out there a little bit more, you will grow as a person. That's another tip that I would give you. And Leah said she had an intern work at Starbucks. Yeah, I had a, a friend who worked at Starbucks. It is, you just don't think about it because it's just food, like fast food, I guess, but it really does get you in the kitchen and you do have to learn to be sanitary. You have to learn to like just how delicate, because at Domino's, you didn't think about it, but you had to change gloves all the time. And so a food service job is really easy to get experience. I got 600 hours of getting paid and then it was still experience for an interview to talk about. It's a wonderful way to get some experience have a job in food service. Um, let's see. This one was just a small tip I had for once you do start interviewing. I reckon my professor stressed to do follow-up emails when you interview, and I will stress that as well because I had very pleasant, um, very pleasant responses so if you do all I said was like dear Mr. or Mrs. Um, the director's name and then you just have to say like thank you so much for giving me an interview and I really learned a lot and I look forward to hearing back from you on match day so I, I really recommend that I think it's very good email etiquette and I don't know if everyone does that but I was stressed to do that <laughs> oh, the diabetes walk, yes. So my club that I have like a, I'm the health fair coordinator at and Student Dietetics Association at Auburn. And this year we recently partnered with EAMC, which is the hospital here in Opelika. And we partnered with specifically their diabetes section to put on a diabetes walk for children in the area, um, we were trying to get them continuous glucose monitors because that just makes life a lot easier. I know if you know someone with diabetes who has gotten one, it it just makes it a lot easier. It makes it so children can go out and play and not have to worry about their blood sugar. And that was what our goal was for that. And our pre current president and some of the other members really worked hard to put out, it was our first ever big community involvement like our club so it really was huge for us and it was a lot of work it was a lot of work but it's so good to um give back to the community as well as you know when you're in the job and especially if you're going to be a community dietitian you're going to be doing things like this to try and uh you're going to be doing things like this to try and give back to the community and help people with these diseases. But yes, it was a great turnout. Our goal was to get $5,000 and we raised over 12,000 and we had over a hundred people show up and it's a lot of hard work. And I think it really goes to show that if you're a student and you're in an organization and you wanna try and do something new and you wanna try and establish something and leave your mark, you can, because we were, we were all new, none of us had, done something like this before and it turned out better than we thought or we ever thought it would so that was really good that was really awesome to be a part of and it was after dicus so i couldn't talk about it but it, you don't have to talk about everything you can just give to your community but yes if you're going to be a president or something like that and you want to establish something, I think it's amazing, amazing, amazing. What if? Leah asked, what if, or what have you learned about being part of the build-up page? How about meeting the other admins virtually, like Ulrika and Lucia? Yes, I really loved um, meeting both of them because 
their dietitians in Spain and the Netherlands. And um, I think every country has its differences and how they go about it. And it was just really interesting uh, talking with them and seeing how they do things. But you no, know, I've learned a lot, especially, so for build up, I usually go and get, um, I usually research and try and find articles and for to post, and I was posting in a lot of groups for a while there. And I think it really taught me how to kind of, you, you learn in school how to differentiate like good sources versus bad sources. But I think at the beginning, I was just kind of getting uh, any kind of article I could. And it wasn't always like the most credible, if that makes sense. And I just wasn't, I don't think I was very helpful at the beginning. But yes, it really helped me kind of learn okay, I can kind of read the language of this article and know that it's trying to sell me something or it's trying to use kind of fear monger language, if that makes sense, versus this one that just kind of lays it out and this is what I should share. And it also kind of got me in the mindset of what a dietitian would want because something actually you told me, Leah, was um, that my articles were more consumer-based than it was to be appealing to dietitians. So I had to kind of put my mind in what a dietitian would want and what I, what I know, if that makes sense. But yes, I've learned to be, I've learned to be a lot more Facebook savvy. I didn't have a Facebook until I joined with BuildUp. And so now I have another social media under my belt. Um, is there anything else? Uh, I feel like I kind of rambled through Dicus a little bit. So if anyone has any questions about that, um, I did kind of mention Dicus does have some fees. I did not know, and I'm very grateful that I had the funds to um, pay for it when I found out, but I didn't know that. So for your matching system, there's a separate website called D&D Digitals. And you have to pay like a little bit of like a membership fee to get your ID number. And that D&D &D Digitals is how you rank your systems. So how you rank them on there is how Dicus is gonna rank them. And then for each uh, program, for each college you want to apply to, there's a fee for each one of them. So your first college you apply to is $50. And after that, it's 25 per school which is quite a lot of money. And so it, for me, I applied to three colleges and, but I know people who applied to like 10. So that was something I did not know until I was just filling Dicus out. So I would love to make people aware of that. So when you're applying, you know that you'll have to pay some money. Um, let's see, is there anything else I wanna talk about? I have some little notes right here, but I talked about what Dicus is. I talked about some of the tabs. Some of the tabs you just have to go through and look at, and that's just where you're going to fill out your professional. How was the D&D fee? Uh, do you remember? I I want to say it was like 25. It was anywhere from between 15 to $25. So I think I spent around $125 in total on just um of application fees and then I had to pay to send my transcript out transcript out and my dream job as a dietitian Leah asked uh right now I'm focusing on clinical I've always wanted to be in like the hospital setting healthcare setting since I was a little girl so that's kind of what I've got for myself but as I've gotten older I've gotten a lot less stuck on that and more open-minded so I'm hoping my internship really kind of solidifies where I want to go but yes right now I'm focusing on clinical and I'm not really sure what specific clinical yet but I've looked into NICU and pediatrics and so the other lives we've had of those was really interesting and I thought about cardiac and like diabetes so I'm just keeping an open mind as of right now but yes, I, there's, I did not realize how many 
jobs you could get as a dietitian until I guess I was like right in it. And so that's why you need to do your research early. Hopefully the, that list of colleges I've sent and programs will help any current nutrition students determine a program for them. Do we have any more questions? Anything, anything you want me to elaborate more on? Mm. Yes, so does anyone have any uh, advice they would give to someone who's about to do an internship now that a lot of you are established? Dietitians. I've asked this question to um, several people, several dietitians I've met in person. And I think the number one thing I hear all the time is to keep an open mind, like I said, which is, I guess, why I've been keeping an open mind is you most people never end up where they thought they were and uh it's just crazy to, to i don't know just thinking i'm going to be in clinical and then i may be in something else but i would keep an open mind especially because maybe you don't want to do something with clinical base maybe you don't want to do something food service based but you're going to have to do that in your, your internship and i don't I don't want to be miserable doing that for however many weeks. So I am going to keep an open mind and I'm going to enjoy every trying with the best attitude with everything I'm going to do. Keep an open mind. Yes. That is the number one response I've heard. Leah said she did clinical, but ended up doing outpatient. She loved clinical, ended up doing outpatient care and clinical and then public health, WIC, and then retail. Yes, my, one of my professors, she wanted to do clinical and she ended up um, moving somewhere where there was only a food service job available. And so she ended up doing food service. And now she's in academia teaching us about food service. So it's crazy. You don't know where you'll end up. And I'm really excited to see where I find myself. Is it possible to do internships while having a separate full-time job? Hmm. I've heard varying, I have asked that because I wanted to know too. I've heard varying reports and depending on what school you wanna to go to, you can ask your professor or your um, program director. I think it is possible um, over the weekends and stuff like that. My program that I'm going to in the fall will be like, uh, what are they called? Accelerated. So I have my internship and master's degree all in one year. But even then, um, the director told me she still had students who did jobs on the weekends. But I think it really gets up to where your rotations are scheduled and what you'll be doing. So please, if you have a college that you want to go to when it comes time to apply, ask them about that and see if they're very flexible. Because some programs are a little more flexible, some are a little more rigid with their scheduling. So I am been thinking about getting a, oh, having a separate full-time job. I don't know about a full-time job because you spend a lot of What did Leah say? A uh, full-time job. I, I just heard you have several hours a day in the um, in whatever rotation you're doing. And so depending on the full-time job, maybe, but I would definitely ask a director. I hope that answers your question. It's just so many um, programs vary with their time they ask you to require and how they schedule you that it's kind of up to the program. 
yeah i've heard i've heard a part-time job would be tricky already as well Well, we've come up to about 30 minutes, so um, I'll probably wrap things up. Are there any more questions? Thank you, Leah. I'm so excited for what the future offers because we'll see where I go. Thank you so much.